When an activity sends or receives a message of some kind, we call that message a signal. And in UML activity diagrams, there are two kinds of signals. The first is the input signal, and as you can see here, the input signal is represented by a concave polygon. And the input signal indicates that the activity receives the message or accepts the outside event. For example, in the, in the morning when your alarm goes off, you receive that signal and it causes you to do a particular action, which is wake up. So an input signal can initiate a particular activity or a particular process. And often what happens with an input signal is that the flow pauses to listen for an outside event. And from there, your diagram shows how the activity reacts once the signal has been received. As in this example, the signal is the alarm. Once you've received that signal, you wake up. Now one particular kind of input signal that you might see in some diagrams is time. And this can be represented by a sort of hourglass shape. And time is an input signal that initiates various actions or activities. For example, the end of the fiscal year will often start a whole string of, of processes. So time is one kind of input signal. The other kind of signal is the output signal. And as you can see, this is represented by a convex polygon. The output signal shows that the activity sends the message. It sends the signal. For example, you might have some kind of process where you request uh, a confirmation. And the output signal is useful when part of the process involves sending a message, such as a confirmation request, and then waiting for a response before continuing. So when you request a confirmation, you're going to wait to either get the confirmation or uh, get a no in response before you proceed. So that suggests that request confirmation uh, is going to be followed by some kind of decision. And there might be a couple of different actions that you can do depending on whether you get confirmation or you don't. So that shows how signals work. They're either input into the activity or their output to some outside entity outside of the activity. Let's do a quick simple diagram to show how you might do this in practice. Let's do a procedure for getting a pizza delivery. So the first thing that you would do would be call the pizza place and here we're using an output signal because you are sending a signal out um, and then you're going to wait until you get some sort of response. The next step would be an input signal. So the next thing you would do would be wait for that response which would be indicated by the doorbell ringing. So you call the pizza place and then you get the response when the doorbell rings. And your response to that input signal would be to answer the door. And from there, your process can continue with other actions. You answer the door, uh, you pay, and then you eat. And all of these things would be indicated uh, by control flows, how one flows into the next. So this shows a, a simple example of how output signals and input signals can work inside an activity diagram to show how messages get sent 
from the activity and received by the activity as part of the flow.